right, we're still on 5.2, solving quadratic equations by factoring, and we have example 3. And with this one, um, this is one of those other patterns. Um, what you need to realize is, can something squared give you 25? You betcha, 5 squared, right? And can something squared give you 4? You betcha, 2 squared. So I can actually combine those two items together to get a 2x squared and a minus 5, because both items are squared and there's no term in the middle. I can take the first term minus the second term and the first term plus the second term to get my answer of 2x minus 5 and 2x plus 5. So when I take a look at this, um, we take a look at the first term and can I square that 9? You betcha. I can square the first and the last numbers, right? That is three y, a 3 squared and a y squared. The last term is a 4 squared. So can you take the first terms, multiply them together, and multiply it by a 2 to get 24. You got it. 3 times 4 times 2 is 24. So my first term is actually a 3y when I combine those together. right? It's actually a 3y. And the last term is a 4. So what that means is, since it's addition, I just take the 3y and the 4, I add them together, and I square the whole thing. And that will give me my answer. So taking a look at this one, can I take the first term and square it? You betcha, 7 squared, right? And I have an r squared. Can I take the last term and square it? You betcha, that's a 1 squared. So basically what I'm saying here is I take the first term and that term and I put them in there so I get a 7 times 1. Can I multiply that by negative 2 and get negative 14? You betcha, negative 2 times 7 is negative 14. So the whole first term is a 7r, the whole last term is a 1. So that means I take the first term and the last term, and I subtract them and square it. And I know it's subtraction because it's subtraction there the entire way down. Now keep in mind you could just factor this problem. 49 times 1 is 49. So what multiplies to give you 49 that also adds to give you negative 14? Well, negative 7 and negative 7. So I would separate this as 49r squared minus 7r minus 7r plus 1 because negative 7r, negative 7r is negative 14r. So I can factor each of these by grouping and in the first item I can take an r out and I can take a negative 7 out, or sorry, a positive 7. If I take a positive 7 out and I take an r out, I now am left with 7r minus 1. In this problem if I take a negative 1 out I would get a negative 1 and a 7r minus 1. And the reason why I took a negative 1 out is so that these two items can be exactly the same. So I actually have a 7r minus 1 when I combine those together, and a 7r minus 1, and two, uh, 7 minus r's is 7 minus r squared. So the point I'm getting at here is if you don't remember some of these formulas, you can still factor. Okay, so you can still factor if you don't remember the formulas. Oh, yes. A monomial is an expression with only one term in it is a monomial. That's 4x squared. All of that, even though there's a whole bunch of different letters, they're all still one term because they're all multiplied together. So example four, taking a look at that. Um, what do they both have in common so I can take them out of both? Well, um, x, no, they both don't have an x, but they both do have a 5. If I took a 5 out of both these, I get x squared minus 4. What you need to realize is after you take an item out like that, can you still keep factoring this? Well, that's squared. Can I rewrite 4 squared? You betcha. I can rewrite that as a difference of 2 squares. I could write that as x squared and a 2 squared. Since it's an x and a 2, I can rewrite that as x minus 2 and x plus 2 because of the difference of squares formula, and I still have that 5 on the outside, so I can't forget about that 5. When I take a look at this, I see if what they all have in common. Well, they actually all have a 3 in common. If I take a 3 out of everything, I have a 2p squared, I have a 5p, and I have a 3 left over. So, when I continue on with this problem, I have to see if I can factor this. So, when I sit here, try to factor that, 2 times 3 is 6. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to give me 6, add to give me 5. So when I'm sitting here doing that, all I can come up with is 2 and 3, right? 2 times 3 is 6, 2 plus 3 is 5. So I separate that 5p into 2p and 3p, which means I can factor each of those by grouping, and each of these has a 2p that I can take out of both of them, 
right? Leave me with a 2p uh, and p plus 1 on the inside. I can take a 3 out of this right here. And when I do that, that leaves me with a p uh, plus 1. So 3 times 2, I get 6p. And I have a 3 out front, so I can do 6. Uh, so I can take these two, combine them together, and get 6p plus 3. And that drops down to give you p plus 1. And I realize in here that they both have a 3 in common, so I can take a 3 out. And I get 3 times 2p plus 1 and p plus 1. Take a look at this one. I can take a 2 out of both those, 2 and 8. And I can also take a u out of both of those. We divide each of those by 2 and a u. I end up with 2u uh, and u plus 4 as well. And u plus 4 is as simple as I can make it. So the zero product property, after you factor, you can set each to zero to solve for a quadratic. Oh, yeah. you lose. So when you sit here and try to factor this, I'm looking for two numbers that 1 times negative 18 multiply to give me negative 18 that add to give me 3. Well, it happens to be a positive 6 and a negative 3. So since there's no number out in front of the x squared, I can just write this as x plus 6 and x minus 3. And since I set them equal to zero, it's actually very simple. When I set them equal to zero, right? When I set them equal to zero, um, to solve this problem, all I have to do is separate each of them. X plus six equals zero, and X minus three equals zero. I separate them uh, for the very simple reason um, that if one whole of these is zero, zero times any of those is zero. So that's why I'm setting one of each of these to be um, zero. So in order to solve this, um, I would look at the first one. I could subtract six on both sides, or I could add three to both sides. When I subtract six on both sides, I get x equals negative six. When I add three to both sides, I get x equals three. And both of those work. What I want you to keep in mind is quadratic equation and you get two answers. There's a little two up there and you end up with two answers. You ask yourself a question. Do I feel lucky? With this problem right here, you want to combine all the like terms on one side. So uh, since most of the terms are over here, I'm going to move all the terms over on this side to set it equal to zero. So I minus 3t on both sides. So I have a 20, negative 20t over here. I add 5 to both sides and I get a 50 over here. I notice in all three of those that they have a 2 in common, so that's a 2, I take that out, it's t squared, it's a negative 10t, and that is a 25. The reason I do that is, what two numbers, 1 times 25 is multiply to give me 25, that add to give me negative 10? Well, negative 5 and negative 5 do. Negative 5 times negative 5 is 25, negative 5 plus negative 5 is negative 10. So when I set it up, it's t minus 5 and t minus 5 with the 2 on the outside. So when I separate this to solve, it would just be t minus 5 equals 0 and t minus 5 equals 0. So I add both sides to both of them, and I find out that t equals 5 is my answer. So zeros. We don't need uh, no stinking zeros here. So example 8. Um, you maintain a music-oriented website that allows subscribing customers to download audio and video clips of their favorite bands. When the subscription price is 16 per year, you get 30,000 subscribers. For each $1 increase in price, you expect to lose 1,000 subscribers. How much should you charge to maximize your annual revenue? Well, revenue equals the number of subscriptions times the price. The number of subscriptions is you get 30,000. Okay and the price you expect to lose a thousand subscriptions each year because that is the price so thirty thousand minus what you're expected to lose which is a thousand prescriptions um, which is why we have that there and the price now is sixteen per year and it increases by one so sixteen and increase by one so to find the maximum price this is what we have is put the x's in order I can divide a th negative thousand on both those, and when I do that, I'm left with negative thousand um, equals. Um, let's see here, x minus thirty and x plus sixteen. So x minus thirty equals zero. X plus sixteen equals zero. If I add thirty to both sides, or I subtract negative sixteen, I end up getting thirty and negative sixteen as my answer. So. 
when we look at this, we need to find the average to find the maximum because 30 would be the max, but you would not sell the subscriptions for negative $16. So those are our two answers. So to find the middle between those two, I add them and divide by 2. So 7 is the exact answer that we need. So when I plug a 7 in for x, I get 23 there. So the price is 23, as in there's 23 is the subscription price for the maximum value that you would need. And when I plug in the 7, you would sell them for 23000 so you'd end up making $529,000. And that's the maximum revenue you'd be able to get. So there's your homework. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel to email me or check online for further examples.